so let us recall what is Riemann integration we have defined a function f from a b to r and we say that it is bounded then this is a necessary condition to define the Riemann integration because what we are saying is that you take first we started for the upper sum that the supremum and the for the lower sum infimum and then you have the rectangles and then you are finding the Riemann sum and get the Riemann integration. And also we are only allowed to talk of Riemann integration when function f is bounded as well as a and b they are finite numbers. That means uh, it is on a closed and bound on a finite interval. Sometimes we have faced the situation that where our function can be unbounded or this interval can be an infinite interval. So, now a natural question occurs that can we address this drawback of Riemann integration by using the method prescribed by Riemann. Well, then first let us say suppose we have an infinite interval. So, and given to us is that f is Riemann integrable let us say we have a infinity for a x for every x belongs to R with such that x is greater than a. That means, we have an infinite interval here it is a. So, now I take x anywhere. So, in this interval we are given that our function f is Riemann integrable. So, then we define now, what we can, what is the most natural thing? The most natural thing is that we should look for, we, we know that this is, this quantity is defined. So, now in order to define the integral, so what of a to infinity, what we need to look at that the limit x goes to infinity. Now, if we know that where this limit may exist may not exist. So, if this limit exists, if exists, we say we denote integral a to infinity f of x dx is equal to limit x goes to infinity a to x f t d t. This symbol is called the improper integral.
of the first kind. So in the Riemann sense, we cannot define A to infinity, but we can define it in improper way. That means, we our f is such that it is Riemann integrable on any finite interval A x and whatever we will get the value of the Riemann integration, this is going to be a function of x. Then we take the limit x goes to infinity. Now, if that limit exists, then what we will say that the improper integral of a to infinity of f is nothing but limit x goes to infinity a to x f t. On this side, remember on the right hand side, we have a proper bona fide Riemann integration and this side, it is nothing but the limit of those uh, function what we are getting for each x. Let us look at a concrete example to understand that. So, this is uh, uh, let us say that we want to consider the improper integral of dt by t square. To give a meaning, what do we want to, what is our f? Here f of t is equal to 1 by t square, right. So, now in order to check that this 1 to infinity exists, we need to check that integral 1 to x f t dt must exist. Now, t greater than 1 f t is a continuous function and for a fixed x, this is also a bounded function. Now, we know that this is being a continuous function on a finite interval, this is going to be Riemann integrable, so our condition is satisfied. Now, in order to compute this, what we need to compute is that this integral 1 to x f t dt. So, this is nothing but 1 to x dt by t square and this is equal to 1 over t t, we have uh, t to the power minus of 1 over t, 1 to infinity, yeah, 1 to x. So, this is going to be equal to 1 minus 1 by x. Now, for each x what we have computed this integral 1 to x f t dt is 1 minus 1 by x. Now, what we are supposed to check? We are supposed to check that the limit x goes to infinity 1 to infinity f t dt must exist. So, what is this limit? So, therefore, limit x goes to infinity 1 to infinity f t dt is equal to limit x goes to infinity 1 minus 1 upon x which is equal to 1. Therefore, the improper integral 1 to infinity dt by t square, this now we can write it as 1. Now, let us look at the same thing if we what about what happens to this d t by t. Here our f t is 1 by t square, a eh, 1 by t. Again, x greater than 1. So, this f 1 to x d t by t, this exists because 1, 1 over t t bigger than 1 is a continuous function. So, any finite interval this is going to be Riemann integrable. Now, this step is satisfied one of the condition. Now, we will try to let us find out what the value of this. So, this is going to be ln of x minus of logarithm of 1 which is. Now, 
in order to write 1 to infinity dt by t as an improper integral, we must need to show that limit of 1 to x dt by t, t limit x goes to infinity x s. However, in this case limit x goes to infinity of logarithm of x is equal to infinity. So, this is not Riemann integrable in the improper sense. 1 by t is not Riemann integrable from 1 to infinity dt by t. However, 1 by t square is Riemann integrable from 1 to infinity in the improper sense. So, one can also kind of show that uh, 1 by t to the power p p bigger than 1 uh, from 1 to infinity, this is integrable in the sense of improper integral. Let us take another example. Let us take f of x. This is equal to x e to the power minus of x square. Now, we want to check integral 0 to infinity f of x dx. Now, whether this exists or not. So, in order to do that, what, what do we uh, need to consider? First of all, this is a continuous function. So, we need to first check 0 to x t e to the power minus of t square dt. This is a continuous function, x is a finite number, therefore, this is going to be Riemann integrable. Now, if we want to make a change of variable, so you take t square is equal to s by the substitution, this is 2 t dt is equal to ds. So, now this is going to be 1 by 2 integral, so this is uh, e to the power minus of s and then this is ds. And when t equal to 0, s is equal to 0. When t, t equal to x, s is going to be x square. Now, we know how to compute this. This is going to be 1 by e to the power minus, minus of e to the power minus of x, 0 to x square. This is equal to 1 half. Then 1 minus e to the power minus of x square. Now, next what we need to check is that the limit as limit x goes to infinity, where does this go? So, limit x goes to infinity, 0 to x t e to the power minus of t square dt is equal to limit x goes to infinity 1 by 2, 1 minus e to the power minus of x square. Now, this is equal to half. Therefore, so limit 0 to infinity in the improper sense of this integral is equal to half. So, as we have seen that even 1 by t is not integrable in the improper sense from in the interval 1 to infinity and also you can see that suppose we have we want to test sin t dt. Now, here you can see that 0 to x sin t dt this exists. Now, one part of the condition is satisfied to check that whether this is Riemann integrable or not. Now, we, next part is that we want to see that how they behave when x goes to infinity. So, this we can compute this is nothing but minus of cos, cos t with 0 to x which is equal to minus of cos x and then plus 1. This is 1 minus cos x. Now, limit x goes to infinity cos x does not exist. So, limit x goes to 
infinity cos x does not that means what I mean after whatever value you take. So, you will find some x for which cos is going to take the value 1 and some x for which cos is going to take the value minus of 1 or 0. So, this is cos is going to fluctuate. So, this is an oscillating thing the limit will not exist and therefore, this is not Riemann integrable integrable in the improper sense. As you can see this is a very nice function sin t is uh, continuous bounded and everything. Similarly, you can see that if I take f of x is equal to 1 this is a very nice function. So, now if we want to get 0 to infinity f of x dx, this is not Riemann integrable in the improper sense. Because if you take 1 0 to x, what you are going to get x and limit x goes to infinity is going to be infinity. Exactly in the similar fashion, we can also define similarly we can define integral minus infinity to a f of x dx. That means, for this what we f has to be Riemann integrable for x a, for x less than a for all x and then this limit x to a f t dt limit x goes to minus of infinity must exist. So, then what we are going to get? And now, combining these two, now if we want to define something like this, so f t d t, this what you can take is limit x goes to infinity, limit y goes to minus of infinity, which is y to x f t d t. This is where this is going to be the Riemann integrable in if this exists from x to y and then limit exists. Do not make a mistake of writing which is not equal to limit a goes to infinity minus of a to a f t d t in general. Okay, so, uh, we have uh, addressed when the interval becomes an unbounded interval. Now, there is what we have seen is that there is a drawback when our function is unbounded. Here, we are considering the function to be bounded, but the interval to be unbounded. Now, obviously, we would like to consider when our interval is bounded, but the function is not bounded. Okay, so, that is uh, uh, what uh, one would uh, like to see this is the improper integral of the second kind. Of second kind. So, this is where we are saying that uh, our function may be unbounded, but we want to get the Riemann integration, but we have a to b f of x dx f could be 
unbounded. So, in order to address this issue, obviously we know that we do not have a prescription of the Riemann to talk about the Riemann integration of this sort of functions, because it is unbounded. Now, what we do is that uh, let us say unbounded on A B at, at one point, at the end point A the function is unbounded. Let us say square root of x on 0 1. This function is unbounded because when I go close to 0 then this is going to be infinity 1 by x 1 by x square so on and so forth logarithm of x on 0 1 this is also unbounded. So, how to address this question? So, again what we need to show is that. So, we must get first is that integral x to b f t d t exists for all x which is greater than a and less or equal to b. And now next is that limit x goes to a what I am coming from the right hand side from the x to this. So, this is a plus one sided limit of x to b f t d t exists. Then we say that then integral a to b f t d t b is the improper integral, this is of the second kind, which is equal to limit x goes to a plus integral over x to b f t d t. Now, let us try to find some concrete example of that. So, let us consider, consider f of x, this is equal to logarithm of x, when x belongs to 0, 1 it is not defined on 0, 1, it is on the open interval and which is an unbounded function. Now, take any x bigger than 0. So, now integral over x to 1 f t d t ln t d t, this is equal to, what we do is that we can do it by integration by parts because this is a continuous function from each for a fixed x. This is a continuous function on the closed interval x to 1 because x is greater than 0. Now, we can do the um, uh, integration by parts here. So, integration by parts will give that this is ln t times t, this is x to 1 minus integral over x to 1, this is integration of the constant function I am taking to be the 1 therefore, this is t and ln t derivative is 1 by t dt. So, this is ln 1 is 0. So, this is minus of x ln of x minus integral x to 1. So, this is going to be uh, nothing but t, t is 1 minus of x. So, this is going to be minus of 1 minus x ln x plus x. Now, what we have seen is that as x goes to 0, this is going to be, as x goes to 0, this is going to be 0 x into ln x that is going to be 0, that is 
what we had done earlier. So, this is going to be equal to. So, the improper integral of the logarithm is from 0 to 1, this is of the second kind, this is going to be negative 1. Similarly, you can try dx by a square root of x. Now, what you need to find is that x 2, this is the problematic point is at 0, this is where it is unbounded. So, now d t by square root of t, which is equal to t to the power half times 2, this is x to 1, which is equal to 2 minus 2 square root of x. Now, this goes to 2 as x goes to 0. Therefore, this is improper integral of the second kind. But however, if we want to do it with the dx by x, then what we need to check? x to 1 dt by t, which is equal to ln of t from x to 1, which is equal to minus of ln of x. However, when x, you want to get it to 0, so this goes to minus of, this goes to infinity as x goes to 0 because ln x goes to min negative infinity. So, this is what you are going to get infinity. So, this is not improper integral. This is not improper integral. So, for the improper integral, what we need to do is that you need to check for each for the first kind, you check that a to x is integrable, take the limit. Now, for the second kind, you are allowing your function to be unbounded on a particular point, on one of the end point, and then at anything beyond that end point, any x greater than that, x to b f t d t, if that is Riemann integrable, and if that limit go converge, then we say that this is also we can write it the improper integral of the second kind. So, this is uh, where we will end our lectures on Riemann integration. Uh, well, there are many applications what we have seen in the Riemann integration and uh, we have seen how the Riemann integration is related uh, to the derivative as the fundamental theorem of calculus and then finally, what we saw is that we can beyond the notion of integration to a larger class in the sense that when our domain is infinite and when or when f is unbounded at a point. This we need to check case by case and if we get this then we say that this is improper integral. Thank you.